Welcome to this demonstration of Blaze Collectica questionnaires. The main goal of the software is to allow survey creators to build surveys with an intuitive user experience. So with that in mind, on the opening screen you'll notice there's just two buttons. We can either create a new survey or open an existing survey. So for this demonstration, let's create a new survey and we'll say we're going to create a survey about commuting. So now that we have our survey, you'll notice there's just one button, and we can click that to add the first item to our survey. When we click the button, we will be presented with the item palette, which shows the different types of things we can add to the survey's design surface. We have static content, so basic descriptive text. We have a number of different types of questions, including multiple choice, text, numeric, and some others. Uh, and then you can use the structure area to organize your survey into sequences or sections, uh, as well as to add validation logic. The repository section lets you reuse questions from a question bank, which might be running on Collectica repository. So to start, let's just add a welcome message to welcome people to our survey. And next, let's create a section. We're going to create a nicely organized survey, so let's just create a section to gather some basic information from the respondent. And we'll drill into that section and we'll add a few questions. And we'll start off by saying, what's your name? I'll just gather the respondent's name. So that's a text question. Uh, next, Let's add a numeric question and we'll ask the respondent for their age. And finally for this section, let's ask the gender of the respondent. And this one will be multiple choice. So you can see as we're adding the questions, we get the live preview of what those questions might look like. When we're drilled into a section, we can use the breadcrumb bar at the top to go back up to the top level of the survey. So next, let's reuse a sequence of questions from a question bank. Uh, we're running a Collectica repository that hosts a number of uh, survey instruments from other projects, and so I can browse that repository and find this section that asks about the location of the respondent. Uh, we can notice when we select that that it's been used in this previous household survey. So after adding that sequence, we can drill into it and take a look at the questions that are brought down as part of that section of the survey. So next let's reuse another sequence of questions, and this time let's ask some questions about work. And this one looks like it was used in the employment survey previously. And finally, let's add one more section of questions to finish off the survey, and this one will be about commuting, so how people get to work. <clears throat> now you notice there's these red indicators on the last two sections I've added. So those indicate that the sections require some inputs, but the survey doesn't know where to get those inputs from. So if we drill into the section, we can take a look at what it's expecting. So in this case, we have a validation check or an edit check that is verifying that if the child is less than 10 years old, that they probably don't work a job. Uh, we can specify the edit checks as soft or hard, and I believe this is a soft check. So this edit check is only activated if the respondent age is less than 10, but since we don't ask respondent age in this section, we'll need to fulfill this input. So when we click the indicator to fulfill the input, we can look at all the previous questions that are available in the survey, uh, filtered by which questions could possibly fulfill this input. So in this case, it'll only see numeric questions. And we can select the previous age question that we asked, and now uh, our section is satisfied with that input.
So similarly, we can do this for the job count. And this time, since we're further down in the survey, we have more options to choose from. Uh, but we do have the job count question that we can use to fulfill that input. So now that we have a survey specification, we can take a look at some of the other views that are available. If we click for the questions view, we can see just a linear list of all the questions in the survey. And this can be useful so we don't have to drill back and forth down into the sections and back up and back down to see everything. We can just go through one list and see all the questions in order that they would appear. Uh, and for each question, it's going to indicate what section it's in and also what conditions would have to be true for that question to be on the route for the respondent. Next, we also have a flowchart view, and we can click that to see a high-level view of the structure of the survey. We'll notice the arrows routing around different sections that would be skipped based on the display logic. So next, let's add some extra display logic, and we're going to add it around the whole section about commuting. So let's just click the menu and choose Add Display Logic. And we're going to say we only want to ask this, these questions about commuting if they previously answered that they do have a job. So we can use the Expression Builder to create that expression. Okay, and finally, let's uh, just finish the survey off with a final question that asks for any comments that the respondent might have. We can go back to the flowchart view and see how that's updated in real time to reflect the new display logic. So now that our survey is ready, there's a few different things we can do with the survey. Uh, from this one standard specification, we can generate Blaze 5 source code, or we can create a PDF specification, or we can also export the DDI XML. So I'm going to select Blaze 5 to start off and just click the Run button. I'll be prompted to enter the file name where to save the source code, and I'll click Save. So if you do have Blaze installed on your system, uh, Cl Blaze Collectica Questionnaires will actually kick off the Blaze Instrument Builder process to compile the instrument and then to launch the data entry program so you can immediately see what the survey will look like in Blaze. And here we can fill out the survey and find out what the respondent or the interviewer would be seeing as they go through things. So let's say I want to make a small change to the survey. When we asked how we get to work, I could only select one option, but perhaps the respondent might take multiple ways to work. So we can do that just by clicking through to edit the question's details, and we'll change it to select all that apply instead of only selecting one. So once we do that, we'll just click Run again, and we'll overwrite the, the one we wrote to last time. And again, Blaze is going to kick off with the instrument builder, and then we will launch the data entry program and we can immediately see the results of that change to our survey. So that's another one of the main goals of Blaze Collectica questionnaires is to really speed up the iteration cycle for when the, from when the survey designer wants to make a change to the time when they can take a look and see what that change looks like. So in this case, we can make the change and see the results in 10 or 20 seconds later instead of potentially hours or days if it had to be handed off to a programming team and get onto their work schedule and then sent back for review. Let's take a look at some of the source code that the Blaze Collectico's questionnaire generated. 
Uh, as you see, we generate the types for all the response options, we generate fields for all the questions, and we generate rules to show all the questions and to uh, implement the display logic that the survey designer created. You can also browse all those elements using the Blaze meta view. So next, let's take a look at what a specification looks like. I'll just choose specification from the drop-down and click run, and then choose a PDF file to save it to. So here we can take a look at the PDF that was generated, and it's going to contain all the information that's entered as part of the survey design. Uh, so every bit of information about each question that we added is going to get output here. And under each question, we're also going to see the context uh, where that question appears. So if it's in one of those nested sections, it'll show us the name of that section. And if there are any display logic, if there's any display logic added, we'll see what conditions must be true in order for the question to be on the route. So, so far we've only added question names and question text, as well as the response options, of course. Uh, but it is possible to add extra metadata to any of these questions. So we can do that by opening the Question Detail Editor and choosing the Attributes tab. Uh, we can add as many of these custom attributes as we like, and they can also be pre-configured so that the input fields would already exist for your survey designer. Finally, let's publish this survey instrument to our Collectica repository. So I'm just going to click Synchronize from the menu, and then enter a commit message. And I'll hit Publish. And so there it's sent the items to the repository. And once the items are in the repository, we can go over to Collectica Portal and take a look at what the survey looks like on the web. So thank you for watching this demonstration of Blaze Collectica questionnaires. We've seen how we can specify a survey with a visual, intuitive user interface. We can reuse questions from question banks as well as full blocks of questions from that question bank. And based on the standard specification that we've built, we can generate multiple outputs including Blaze 5, survey source code, uh, PDF specification, as well as publishing to the web.